Well, hello, Grace Bible Church in Hollidaysburg. I am so glad to have uh, representatives of your church family here in Italy. And this is my home. We're standing on my terrace in Caselle, Italy. And um, it's just such a pleasure to spend a little time with you today in this interview. The overall picture is this. We are trying, we're not just trying, we believe, we have hope that there is going to be an evangelical community in Caselle. And that's a big deal because we are living in a town which has some 2,000 years of history and to our knowledge there has never been a Protestant congregation in this town. So we are here to plant the very first Protestant congregation in this town. And that's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's a miracle of God's grace. Now we're at the very beginning and it's hard, slow work. Um, and we don't really know what's going to happen, but we had our first Italian person baptized last October. Um, and that is another miracle of grace. So uh, that's what you're a part of. Uh, you're a part of seeing the very first Protestant congregation planted in this town uh, of Caselli. And um, that's really what the bigger picture is. I just cried. Sorry. <laughs> so. Anyway, I, I can't say how thankful I am for your partnership in, in this vision. Uh, you know, I grew up in a family that was unbelieving. My family members are still unbelieving. And so from the very beginning of my experience in, you know, among the people of God, I've always had this heart for trying to communicate the gospel to those who do not believe. And that has conditioned really everything I've done since then. Um, because that's where I come from, that's who I am. You know, I didn't grow up in a church family where we took those things for granted. So that's always conditioned um, what I'm about. Um, and so then I went to Bible college and I had heard about, you know, this sense of having a calling. And there was a recruiter from ABWE who came to speak at the chapel service during the week. And <laughs> I went to talk to him afterwards and I was like, what, what's going on in Italy? Tell me about that. And he says, are you interested? I said, like, no. I'm not interested. <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, he says, well, you know, listen, I've got some meetings, but then I'll be at my table, you know, later in the afternoon. Why don't you come by and talk to me in the afternoon? You know, if you feel comfortable. Okay, maybe. <laughs> so I went back in the afternoon to talk to him, and it was so funny because I think maybe three hours had passed, including, you know, part of it was the lunch hour. And I got back there, and um, and so I show up and he's like, oh, you know, I'm expecting he's some, I don't know what I was thinking, but it was like some big, big wig missions guy and he's not going to even know who I am anymore. And uh, instead I show up and he's like, hey, Melissa, how you doing? Simpson? I've been on the phone with the folk, the, the team in Italy, and they're, you know, ready to receive somebody to come over. How's May sound? Oh. And I was like, you know, was like, you know, <laughs> uh, well, maybe. And so anyway, ends up being that uh, I came here to Italy. I was you know, saying uh, to Michael and Shannon and the girls this morning, you know, there's a sense in which when you first come to the country, you go through those culture shock issues, and then you get to a place where you start to feel comfortable. And you're saying, yeah, I fit, this makes sense, you know, and, you know, I've, you know, got this, <laughs> you know? And then you, uh, um, but then you kind of go past it and you get to a point where you begin to understand the culture at a deep enough level where you realize just how subtle those differences are and what unique, sort of challenges they present to ministering in this place and to these people. And I, and I feel like I'm there now. Um, but it's one of those things where you don't like arrive. It's like you get there and you go, oh my, there's so much to learn. <laughs> and you realize that you really could spend a whole lifetime here and only really touch the surface. And uh, so, you know, for instance, one of the things that we really were presented with this year um, was realizing that uh, you know, when we were talking about salvation by grace, salvation by faith, you know, when we used the word faith, they interpreted that as a work. You know, faith is what you do, you know, and that, you know, if we said to people, you know, put your faith in Christ to them, that, you know, in their head, you know, this computed to, I have to do this work in order to earn God's favor. And, you know, one of the things we've landed on, for instance, I mean, this is just a small example, you know, but this idea of viewing, you know, realizing if we communicate that you're, we're saved by God's faithfulness, not by our faithfulness. You know, it's God's faithfulness. And that so he's the one that's been active in it, and we're the ones who passively allow ourselves to be loved and saved and reconciled by him. Uh, so uh, here's the thing. Here's the, the final little, um, here's a good marketing spiel. So here's the Tic Tacs, right? Yeah. Little red, 
red, white, and green TikToks for the town flag. And uh, so, did you know? Uh, that, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I should not do commercials. <laughs> so, anyway, these are TikToks. Did you know that TikToks are made in Italy, in Torino, right next door to where I live here? So the idea is every time you're at a grocery checkout counter and you see TikToks next to the cash register, pray for me. So when you see TikToks, pray for Melissa in Italy. And I'm never going to film another commercial <laughs> as long as I live. <laughs> Okay. Love you guys. Ciao. <laughs>